Today I'd like to look at a nice, fairly complicated limit that I found on the Math Stack Exchange. And well, the approach that we'll use here is actually fusing together the approaches from some of the posts on this, well, on this post. And if you want to look at those, the originals, or, you know, any of the other approaches, maybe just check out the link. It's easy to find. Okay, so what are we going for here? Well, we want the limit as n goes to infinity of e to the minus n times the sum as k goes from 0 to n of n to the k over k factorial. And we're going to use, you know, a major tool here, which is called Sterling's formula. So I've made a video about Sterling's formula. I'm not sure if it's posted yet or not. But what it says is that n factorial grows asymptotically similar to the square root of 2 pi times n times n over e to the n power. Where what this really means is that any limit that you have involving n factorial, you can simply replace with this object on the right hand side. So it's super useful. Okay, so we're going to prove a claim first, which will, well, it's not going to do the whole thing, but it'll at least do the second half. But I think it maybe splits it up kind of nicely. So we're going to prove that the limit is n goes to infinity of n to the n plus 1 times e to the minus n over n factorial times the integral from 0 to 1 of 1 minus x to the n times e to the minus nx, or e to the nx, I should say, is equal to half. Okay, great. So now let's maybe start with the following observation. So if we set, set f of x equal to 1 minus x times e to the x, then our limit, which I'll call l, is equal to well, this limit as n goes to infinity of n to the n plus 1 e to the minus n over n factorial. And then we have the integral from 0 to 1 of f of x raised to the n dx. Okay, nice. Now, let's make another observation. And maybe I won't look at all of the details of this observation, but this is fairly easy to prove. I think it's extremely easy to prove. And that is for all x on the closed unit interval, we have f of x is less than or equal to e to the minus x squared over 2. So like I said, that's pretty easy to check on your own. Then, well, that means that our limit is less than or equal to the object that we get from replacing f of x with this e to the minus x squared over 2. Furthermore, it's going to be less than or equal to that where we extend the bounds of integration from 0 to 1 to 0 to infinity. So we might as well do that because then we'll have an integral that is well known. Okay, so let's write that down. So we have our L is less than or equal to the limit as n approaches infinity of, we have this n to the n plus 1, e to the minus n, we have got an n factorial in the bottom, and then we've got an integral from 0 to infinity of, now it's going to be e to the minus n times x squared over 2 dx, because that's what you get when you raise this to the nth power. But this is a version of the Gaussian integral, and this Gaussian integral has a well-known value. So we've calculated the Gaussian integral in the channel before, so I won't calculate it from scratch. But what you get here is that this is equal to the square root of pi over 2 times n. So that's nice. So now let's rewrite our limit with that root pi over 2 times n while making the replacement of this n factorial with Sterling's formula. So that's going to leave us with an n to the n plus 1. We have an e to the minus n. And now we'll have a square root of 2 pi n in the denominator. So let's add that, square root of 2 pi times n. And then we'll have, well, it'll be the reciprocal of this because our n factorial is in the denominator. So that'll give us an e to the n over an n factorial. And now we also have this square root of pi over 2 times n. 
But now let's see what, a, what sort of simplification we get. So now let's observe that this n to the n will cancel this n in the exponent of n. And then after that, the remaining n will get canceled with the two n's that are under the radicals. So that's good. All of those cancel out. Then next up, this e to the minus n will cancel with this e to the n. And then finally, this pi will cancel with this pi. One's in the numerator and one's in the denominator. And we're left with, well, a 1 in the numerator, and then a root 2 times root 2 in the denominator. In other words, we have a half. So that means our limit is less than or equal to a half. Now, we'll also show that it's bigger than or equal to a half, so then it must be equal to a half. So let's get to that part. Okay, so we just showed that our limit was less than or equal to a half. Now we're going to show that it's bigger than or equal to a half. And we're going to use this function again. And well, before we do that, I'm going to define this thing that looks totally crazy. And I mean, I think this is really a testament to this really nice solution that was posted here. So like I said, make sure to check out that. So let's define the following sequence of numbers. So I'll call them a sub n. And they're going to be, be defined like this. It'll be 1 minus n to the minus quarter. And then we'll have that is times e to the n to the minus quarter, and then times e to the negative half n to the minus half. So like I said, that's a crazy sequence of numbers, but that's actually what's required to make this trick work. And then, well, you can also have the following inequality between f of x and a related function and this sequence. And it's like this. So f of x is bigger than or equal to a sub n times e to the minus x squared over 2. So there we've got our e to the minus x squared over 2 in the mix which is nice because we know how to take the integral of that. Okay, good. So that means our limit is gonna be bigger than or equal to what we get where we replace f of x with this object right here. So we're gonna have our limit is bigger than or equal to the limit as n approaches infinity. And now let's make all of our replacements. So here we have an n to the n plus one, we have an e to the minus n over n factorial. We have a n to the nth power, but, but we can in fact replace that with a n to the first power just based off of the size of a n. And the inequality still stands. And then we're also gonna change the bounds of integration, but since we want our limit to be bigger than or equal to, we've gotta decrease the bounds of integration. So now we'll go from zero to n to the minus quarter. And then we'll have e to the minus nx squared over 2 dx. Okay, so that's looking good. Now, next up, we're going to make a substitution in our integration. And the purpose of this substitution is to make the integrand not depend on n. So let's see. In order to do that, we're going to take x and we're gonna replace it with t over the square root of n. But observe that that means that dx is equal to one over square root of n dt. When x is equal to zero, that means that t is equal to zero. And then when x is equal to n to the minus one quarter, that means that t is equal to n to the quarter. So that's how that's going. Okay, so now let's say this is going to be equal to the limit as n goes to infinity of, well, I just get to copy a bunch of stuff down, so we're going to do that. So here we have an a sub n, and now we're going to put this a sub n maybe over the square root of n, bringing that component of dx out. And now we'll have the integral from 0 up to well, you might say n to the quarter, but I'm actually going to bring the limit inside and have that be to infinity of e to the minus t squared over 2 dt. So we've got something like that. And here, I guess we're using, you know, in hindsight, the fact that all of these limits exist. 
but now we can essentially do the same thing again that we did the first bit. So here, this is gonna converge to the square root of pi over two. And then you can check that our sequence a sub n goes to the number one. But now we're left with all of the parts that we had before that gave us a limit of one half. So the same sort of calculation will take us to this is equal to a half. And that's gonna involve Sterling's formula again. So bringing that up here, that means our limit is pinned between one half and one half, which means our limit is equal to a half. Okay, so now let's move on to the main result. So we just finished proving this tool down here and now we're ready to move on to the main result. Okay, so let's see what we'll do here. Well, the first trick is to use the formula for binomial expansion to rewrite, well, what we have in this sum. So let's recall that n choose k is equal to, well, that's gonna be n factorial over um, n minus k factorial times k factorial. Well, we've got a k factorial in the denominator, so let's solve for that. So that means one over k factorial. Well, that's gonna be equal to one over n factorial, and then we have this binomial coefficient n choose k, and then n minus k factorial. Okay, so let's rewrite this using the calculation that we just made and see where that leaves us. So now we have this limit as n goes to infinity. We have e to the minus n over n factorial because we can bring the n factorial out of the sum. And now we'll have our sum as k is going from zero up to n of, well, let's see, it'll be n choose k times n to the k times n minus k factorial. Okay, so that's nice. And now we're gonna take this n minus k factorial and replace it with a well-known integral representation. So this is in fact equal to the integral from zero to infinity of x to the n minus k times e to the minus x dx. So let's see what that leaves us with. So now we'll have this is equal to the limit as n goes to infinity. We have e to the minus n over n factorial. We have our sum, k is going from zero up to n of n choose k. We have n to the k, and now we have the integral from zero to infinity of x to the n minus k, e to the minus x dx. But this is like actually really good news because notice that we've got a binomial coefficient here and then we've got an n to the k here and an x to the n minus k here. So that looks like a binomial has been expanded. So in fact, that allows us to write this or the sum in the following way. So here we have the limit is n goes to infinity. We have e to the minus n over n factorial. And now we're gonna have our integral from zero to infinity of x plus n raised to the n times e to the minus x dx. Good, and I guess maybe I should point out here that we're using, like I said, binomial expansion, which says that if we raise, you know, for instance, a plus b to the n, that turns into the sum as k goes from zero to n of n choose k, a to the k, b to the n minus k. We're using that with, well, x is a and n is b. Okay, so next up, we're gonna make a substitution on this integral. And it's a fairly straightforward substitution. We'll take t and set it equal to x plus n. That means that dx is equal to dt. Then when x is equal to zero, we get that t is equal to n. As x approaches infinity, t will also be approaching infinity. Okay, so let's see, we'll have the limit as n approaches infinity again. We have this e to the minus n over n factorial. We have our integral from zero or from n to infinity now of t to the n. And then solving for x and plugging in here, we'll have an e to the n times an e to the minus t dt. Okay, nice. 
but that's actually good because observe that this e to the n and this e to the n will cancel. And then, well, let's use a little bit of an integration trick. And that will be the fact that the integral from 0 to infinity is equal to the integral from 0 to n plus the integral from n to infinity. We can use that to solve for the integral from n to infinity. And that'll leave us with the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 over n factorial. And then we have the integral from 0 to infinity of t to the n e to the minus t dt minus the integral from 0 to n of t to the n e to the minus t dt. Again, like I said, using that, you know, integration sum trick. But here we've got an integral representation for n factorial, which at least for the first term will cancel this n factorial in the denominator, leaving us 1 minus the limit of the second term multiplied by 1 over n factorial. So let's start the next board with that. So this is where we left off the last board, and now we're ready to do the final steps. So let's do another substitution, and this substitution will take us home. So let's let t be replaced with n minus n times x. So observe that that means that minus t is equal to n times x minus 1. That means that dt is equal to minus n times dx. When t is equal to uh, 0, that tells us that x will be equal to 1. And when t is equal to n, that tells us that x will be equal to 0. And then we're going to maybe use this minus n, or the minus sign in front of the minus n dx, and swap the bounds of integration. We'll kind of switch out of order. OK, so we'll just switch them back in order. So we have 1 minus. Now we've got this limit as n goes to infinity. We have 1 over n factorial. Now it'll be equal to the integral from 0 to 1. And now we'll have n to the n x minus 1 raised to the n, and then e to the nx times e to the minus n dx. And then we've got another copy of n out front from this n right here. Uh, remember I said that the minus sign got gobbled up by switching these back from, you know, they were originally 1 to 0, but now it's 0 to 1. Okay, so now let's pull some things out and observe that, well, we're essentially done. We have 1 minus the limit as n goes to infinity. We now have n to the n plus 1 in the numerator. We also have an e to the minus n in the numerator. And then we've got an n factorial in the denominator, and then the integral from 0 to 1 of x minus 1 to the n e to the n x dx. But that's exactly the limit that we just spent the first half of the video evaluating, and that evaluates to a half. So that means our final answer is 1 minus a half, which is a half. And that's a good place to stop.